It's National Women's History Month, so let's celebrate the women who changed the automotive history and some things that affect you every single day. Now, you may not realize that some of the features and technologies that you use and that you love were designed by women. And the reason they did is the original design or method just wasn't good enough, so they invented a better solution. The first woman to drive a car was Bertha Benz. She was a pioneer. She also took the first road trip in a car. Bertha Benz was married to Carl Benz and supported him in the efforts to create the first horseless carriage, the invention of the automobile. No one else was very interested in this motor car until Bertha and their sons took a now very famous road trip. Without Carl's knowledge, Bertha and the boys snuck the car out of Carl's workshop and they took it for its first long distance road trip from Mannheim to Forsheim. That was pretty cool for the time. It was a rough ride in the roads built for horses and carriages. She made several repairs during that journey and even invented the first brake pad made of leather when the car's wooden brakes failed. Pretty creative, but she's the first woman to test drive a car. But this is just the beginning. These inventions make your life easier. Stay to the end and I'll tell you about my design that changed the automotive aftermarket. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than car reviews, first looks of new vehicles. We give you information so you can have car smarts. We add a little history in there as well. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything because we believe knowledge is power. Margaret Wilcox was a trailblazer. Born in 1838, she was one of a very few female engineers at the time. And in 1893, she received a patent for the interior car heater when she engineered a system that pulled the heat from the engine and then redirected the air inside the cabin, which kept its occupants warm. The revolutionary system became the basis of all future car heating systems. Wilcox was one of the first ever female mechanical engineers responsible for life-changing inventions such as the bake pan combined clothes and dishwashing machine, and the home heater. Mary Anderson invented the windshield wiper. She invented the wiper that helps us drive safely in the rain and snow. She noticed that when it was snowing, the drivers would stop every few blocks to clear off the windscreen. Mary created a hand-operated device with hand-operated handle on the inside and a rubber blade on the outside. A patent was granted to her in 1903. Manufacturers thought this has no value. She never made any money with that patent because it expired before manufacturers realized that this was necessary. She became a very successful developer. In 1917, Charlotte Bridgewood upgraded the wiper to be electronically operated. Her design used rollers instead of blades to clean the windshield. Anderson and Bridgewater were too smart for their time because their patents both expired after not getting enough attention from auto manufacturers. Little did they know, windshield wipers would eventually become a standard feature in all cars. By 1922, Cadillac took Anderson's idea and applied it to their own cars as standard, with other manufacturers quickly hopping on the bandwagon. Florence Lawrence created the signaling arm. At one point in auto history, brake lights and turn signals didn't exist until silent film actress Florence Lawrence saw the need. Drivers would use hand signals, or nothing, and enter Florence Lawrence who starred in over 300 films and effectively became one of the world's first ever movie celebrities. She made a ton of money from her career and was able to buy a very expensive motor car. Driving was an activity that Lawrence found great enjoyment out of it, and it was said to give her brilliant sense of freedom and independence. There were just a couple of things missing. She decided to invent them. In 1913, Lawrence invented a device called the auto signaling arm. That's a special mechanism which worked as a signaling arm to inform other motorists which direction the drivers were heading in. This would form the basis of turn signals and was a revolutionary idea. As occupants usually lifted their arms left or right to indicate their intended direction, Lawrence then created a sign which would pop up on the back of the cars upon pressing the brake pedal. The sign simply would read, stop. In case you can't guess already, that formed the basis of the brake light. Dorothy Levitt invented the rear view mirror. Levitt was the first British female racing driver and a pioneer of women in the automotive sector. She taught Queen Alexandra how to drive along with a royal princess. She even holds the world's first water speed record. She wrote a book titled The Woman and the Car, which was published in 1909. 
In it, there was a recommendation that women drivers should always have a little mirror inside the car while driving. She stressed that it must be placed in a convenient spot so that things behind you were visible. Well, that formed the basis of the rearview mirror, and manufacturers quickly caught on to it. It became a feature a few years later in most vehicles by 1914. June McCarroll invented road lane separation. She was a nurse who was involved in a pretty scary accident. And while driving her Ford Model T, a truck approached her in the opposing direction and forced her off the road, she had to swerve to avoid a nasty crash. She then had an idea that would change roads forever. She personally painted a set of white lines along the roadway. The street is now known as Indio Boulevard in California. The idea was to separate traffic in each direction so there were no head-on collisions. By 1924, her idea was adopted by the California Highway Commission, which made the center lanes mandatory, and they proceeded to paint 3,500 miles of road. And then, soon afterwards, it followed suit across the country for driver safety. Many do believe that in 1906, Edward Hines of Michigan claims to be that inventor. Either way, the roads are much safer. Catherine Bloggett, an engineer and scientist, invented the non-reflective glass and anti-glare windshields. In 1926, at the age of 21, Bloggett was the first woman to receive a PhD in physics at Cambridge University. And in 1938, she developed a liquid soap that when 44 layers were spread over the glass, would allow 99% of the light to pass through. That was anti-glare. Her development paved the way for future engineers to create more durable coatings that wouldn't wipe off. All of these tips are in my book, Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving Your Car. The link is down below. And there's some pretty cool information that will save you money as well. Hedy Lamarr, the famous actress, was the inventor of the Bluetooth. In the 1940s, Lamarr invented a device that blocked enemy ships from interpreting torpedo guidance signals. The device would take the torpedo signals and make them jump from frequency to frequency, making it nearly impossible for the enemy to locate the message. It's that frequency jumping technology that we find in Bluetooth today. It allows us to have our phone hands-free or stream music. Her technology can also be found in cell phones, Wi-Fi, and GPS. Gladys Mae West invented GPS. She's a mathematician who worked for the U.S. Naval Weapons Laboratory. Gladys Mae West was the project manager for CSAT, the first Earth-orbiting satellite which measured ocean depths. That work in 1978 on CSAT project helped the West and her team build GeoSat, satellite creating computer simulations of Earth's surface. Her calculations and work on both projects helped make GPS systems available today in our cars so we won't be lost. Here are some extra fun facts. In 1898, Geneva Delphine Mudge of New York became the earliest known woman to receive a driver's license. She was also the first female in an automobile accident. Her first car was a Waverly Electric, which she drove on the streets of New York City. Among the female firsts was Duchess Dues of France, who in 1898 was the first woman to receive a speeding ticket for going nine miles an hour in a seven mile an hour zone. Here's the bottom line. So many more women have been an important part of the auto industry, and we will go over that in future videos, from racing to auto shows to advertisements. Now here's my automotive invention. In 1992, I was working at a brake rebuilding company. The core product was Corvette and Mustang brake rebuilding. And as we attended many swap meets, people would say, I'd love to have disc brakes. I have drum brakes and I really hate them in the rain. So I went back, put my pen to paper and came up with the first drum to disc brake conversion kit for 1965 to 67 Mustangs to add front disc brakes to early Mustangs. I later added more older vehicles, rear disc brakes, and that are now readily available in the automotive aftermarket for sports cars and muscle cars. And that got me into the Society of Automotive Engineers. If you got value from this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to check out our website, carcoachreports.com. It's all new, it's in English and Spanish, and we have some contributors that'll give you some information that you won't get anywhere else. If you have any additional questions, put them in the comments down below. I will be happy to answer them. There's always new information on the automotive industry, and I put that on my social media, at Lauren Fix, on all platforms. Check out our podcast, Total Car Score, with Carl Brower and Javier Mota. We're having a great time talking about cars, and we'd love to share that information with you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.